Coming up on 5-Minute News. After riot, fears grow about Trump's final days in office. Capitol Police rejected offers of federal help to quell mob. And US registering highest deaths yet from coronavirus. It's Friday, January 8. I'm Anthony Davis. With 12 days left in President Donald Trump's term, a nation shaken by the violence carried out in his name was left wondering what he might do next, and there was open talk in Washington of trying to force him from office early. Out of sight in the White House and silenced on some of his favourite internet lines of communication, the cornered president watched the resignations of several top aides, including a cabinet secretary. As officials sifted through the aftermath of the pro-Trump mob siege on the US Capitol, there was growing discussion on Thursday of impeaching him a second time or invoking the 25th Amendment to oust him from the Oval Office. The invasion of the Capitol building, a powerful symbol of the nation's democracy, rattled Republicans and Democrats alike. They struggled with how best to contain the impulses of a president deemed too dangerous to control his own social media accounts, but who remains commander-in-chief of the military and always in sight of the briefcase containing the nuclear codes. Neither option to remove Trump seemed likely, with little time left in his term to draft the cabinet members needed to invoke the amendment or to organise the hearings and trial mandated for an impeachment. But the fact that the dramatic options were even the subject of discussion in Washington's corridors of power served as a warning to Trump. Fears of what a desperate president could do in his final days spread in the nation's capital and beyond, including speculation Trump could incite more violence, make rash appointments, issue ill-conceived pardons, including for himself and his family, or even trigger a destabilizing international incident. After the storming of the Capitol and the eventual wee hours certification of Biden's win by members of Congress, Trump, after his 12-hour Twitter ban, released a pained video that acknowledged he would abide by a peaceful transfer of power on January 20th. In the video, Trump did not address his role in inciting the violence, but told his supporters, while he knows they are disappointed, he wants them to know our incredible journey is only just beginning. Congress confirmed Democrat Joe Biden as the presidential election winner shortly before dawn on Thursday. Three days before supporters of Donald Trump rioted at the Capitol, the Pentagon asked the US Capitol Police if it needed National Guard manpower. And as the mob descended on the building on Wednesday, Justice Department leaders reached out to offer up FBI agents. The police turned them down both times, according to senior defense officials. Despite plenty of warnings of a possible insurrection and ample resources and time to prepare, the Capitol Police planned only for a free speech demonstration. The result is the US Capitol was overrun on Wednesday and officers in a law enforcement agency with a large operating budget and experience in high security events protecting lawmakers were overwhelmed for the world to see. The rioting and loss of control has raised serious questions over security at the Capitol for future events. The actions of the day also raised troubling concerns about the treatment of mainly white Trump supporters who were allowed to roam through the building for hours, while black and brown protesters who demonstrated last year over police brutality faced more robust and aggressive policing. Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy said that as the rioting was underway, it became clear that the Capitol Police were overrun. But he said there was no contingency planning done in advance for what forces could do in case of a problem at the Capitol because Defense Department help was turned down. U.S. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund, under pressure from congressional leaders, was forced to resign. The Senate Majority Leader asked for and received the resignation of the Sergeant-at-Arms of the Senate, Michael Stenger, effective immediately. The Sergeant-at-Arms of the House was also expected to be removed. 
There were signs for weeks that violence could strike on January 6 when Congress convened for a joint session to finish counting the Electoral College votes. On far-right message boards and in pro-Trump circles, plans were being made. It was Trump and his allies, however, that were perhaps the biggest megaphones, encouraging protesters to turn out in force and support his false claim that the election had been stolen from him. It took four hours to evict the protesters from the Capitol complex. By then, they had roamed the halls of Congress, posed for photos inside hallowed chambers, broken through doors, destroyed property, and taken photos of themselves doing it. Only 13 were arrested at the time. The US registered more COVID-19 deaths in a single day than ever before, nearly 3,900, on the very day the mob attack of the Capitol laid bare some of the same deep political divisions that have hampered the battle against the pandemic. The virus is surging in several states, with California hit particularly hard, reporting on Thursday a record two-day total of 1,042 coronavirus deaths. Skyrocketing caseloads there are threatening to force hospitals to ration care and essentially decide who lives and who dies. Folks look like they're drowning when they're in bed right in front of us, said Dr. Jeffrey Cheen, an emergency room physician at Santa Clara Valley Regional Medical Center, urging people to do their part to help slow the spread. I'm begging everyone to help us out because we aren't the front line. We're the last line. Meanwhile, the number of Americans who have received their first shot of the COVID-19 vaccine climbed to at least 5.9 million on Thursday, a one-day gain of around 600,000, according to the CDC. Hundreds of millions will need to be vaccinated to stop coronavirus. About 1.9 million people around the world have died of it, and more than 375,000 in the US alone. December was by far the nation's deadliest month, and health experts are warning that January could be more terrible still because of family gatherings and travel over the holidays. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate, and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.